Thank you, darling. It's interesting how the truth can sometimes seem uh, might malleable, depending upon your point of view. Like how those dime novels make you out to be something you're not? Jack, don't be starting trouble. No, he's right. They do tend to exaggerate. Did they exaggerate your part in taking down the Daltons? Well, I was there in the flesh, boy, so I saw what happened firsthand. Those Daltons were lawmen once, before they all went bad, robbing banks and trains clear across the territory. Until Coffeeville, of course. I was one of the citizens who took up arms that day. Fighting on the side of the right? I did my best, sir. We all did. It was early morning. One of my friends was a local gunsmith, and he handed out firearms to anybody who'd take one. You see, the Daltons got it in their heads to rob two banks at the same time. Two banks on the same damn street. He can't stand it! Story was Bob Dalton's girl was always writing him about how he had no ambition. Oh, you're nobody next to Jesse James, she'd say. Well, finally, the bastard took his brothers to Coffeville just to shut her up. Right. It's always the woman's fault. The locals recognized the Daltons right off. Before they could get away, half the town took up arms to defend their property. Their first mistake was pulling a job in their own damn hometown. The boys grew up in Coffeeville, so everybody knew them. The bank teller tricked them, telling them the time lock on the safe wouldn't open till 9.30. Well, that gave the locals enough time to prepare an ambush for those sons of bitches. Huh? Hey, we 
got is a hero. Put some holes in him! Brothers paid dearly for their stupidity, but everybody knows they had it coming. There's more to it than that. I read all about that day, so I know for a fact that it went down very differently. First of all, it was high noon. A posse of U.S. Deputy Marshals were on the rooftop across the street. Get ready, boys. They're gonna make a move. The lawmen had been tracking the Daltons for months, and now they finally had them dead to rights. Among them was a bounty hunter feared by many a lawbreaker. This man had no intention of letting the Daltons slip away. The marshals tried to get the Daltons to surrender. They'll give up eventually. We just gotta wait for some bitches out. This bounty hunter knew that the brothers were far too proud to ever lay down their guns. He went in there alone to confront those criminals. One of the marshals shouted, Where are you going? Are you crazy? Hey, where do you think you're going, dumbass? That rifle's mine. But he paid him no mind. saw a way to get around to the back of the bank. Then he figured out how to hit the Daltons from a direction they weren't expecting. From above. Fortunately, a water tower was right there. A moment later, he was climbing up a steep ladder, laughing at danger as he did. It was brave men like him who risked their lives to tame this wild country. Him, who did what other men couldn't or wouldn't to make this country free. Like Jim Bowie and Davy Crockett, who died defending the Alamo.
Is that Silas Greaves? Son of a bitch! Oh. Ah. You can't hide from me! Right, run! came away victorious, taking down those thieving Daltons. Had enough? You're dead. Silas Greaves, and when the dust finally settled, he was the last man standing. Sorry, kid, but that just wasn't the way it happened. It was early evening, not high noon. I was late to the party, and Coffeeville was already up in arms. you the Daltons blew up a safe and we're all set to hightail it out of there those pathetic deputies surrounding the bank were dropping like flies.
I had been tracking those jokers for months, waiting for them to do something reckless. Blake him! And finally, they did. Those stupid bastards decided to rob two banks at the same time in the same town where everybody knew them. But they still had friends in coffee. Uh, help. Shoot, I dare you! Death is too good for them! came after me like a pack of wild dogs. Tooth and nail. They were coming at me from all directions. Put a force in it, Keith. Cut him down! I caught sight of the Daltons running with the money and didn't want to lose them. Problem was, they knew the town better than I did. And to top it off, I found myself in the middle of another shootout entirely. Did the Daltons hole up in somebody's house? No, it was the uh, Smiths, I believe. Shoot them down! They were cousins they of the Daltons. Away with this. And they Come were shooting on, at we the Browns, who were shooting who at we the are. Daltons. They're which wasn't any surprise, because was those two families have been feuding forever. And since the Joneses are related to the Browns, they shot at the Smiths, pissing off the Heimhoffers, whose daughter recently married a Smith. Well, bullets were flying every which way as all the old feuds in Kansas caught fire all at once. There was a hell of a lot of pissed off people in Coffeeville that day. But that's just the way life is sometimes. Shit happens. Shoot him, Emmett! <laughs>
The Dalton boys knew I would never give up. Those Daltons weren't the sharpest knives in the drawer, but they always stood together. They set a trap to slow me down and allow at least two of them to escape. The third brother stayed behind to plant me, just in case that trap of theirs didn't work. youngest, and he decided to stand his ground and face me down. I ain't afraid of you, Silas Greaves. This is where it ends for you. He was determined to protect his brothers. I understood how he felt. Taking me on all by his lonesome wasn't exactly a recipe for a long life. You ain't getting by me, Greaves. You messed with the wrong damn Dalton. You ain't getting by me, Greaves. But Emmett Dalton survived the robbery in Coffeeville. He's the only Dalton who did. They say he was shot 23 times. Well, Dwight, who do you think put all those damn holes in him? But I have to admit, that boy had grit. <laughs>